get rid of the most powerful weapons, which are the semi-automatics, we'd be very happy with that. Australia's gun controls rely on evidence-based public health policy development. It's so easy to forget how quickly all of this happened, just 12 days after the Port Arthur shootings. What on earth does gun control have to do with public health? We were able to do it because uh, the moment was seized. Uh, I was leading a new government with a big majority and we were able to get the cooperation, albeit reluctantly in certain circumstances of the state. Three quarters of a million newly prohibited semi-automatic rifles and shotguns were purchased by the government from gun owners at market value and destroyed. <laughs> The whole purpose of the National Firearms Agreement was to restrict access to rapid style firearms. When I say rapid style, it means that it can propel eight bullets in eight seconds. Six years later, following a shooting at Monash University, the National Handgun Buyback did the same with 68,000 handguns. In the 18 years before the National Firearm Buyback from 1979 to 1996, gun suicide and gun homicide rates were already on their way down. And no substitution of method. That's important. Murderers did not simply switch to other methods.
because if you have immediately at hand a weapon that can kill a lot of people in a short period of time, uh, what then happens is that a, an impulse, a hateful impulse, is turned into a murderous assault. thing in the Australian experience is that if you remove uh, these lethal automatic and semi-automatic weapons, the murder rate from the use of guns does decline. This study found that the buyback had no influence on gun homicide. A 20 year study in JAMA concluded that Australia's gun controls were associated with fewer gun deaths, but it wasn't possible to be certain that one caused the other. Guns are to gun violence as the mosquito is to malaria.